Tournament poker. The only phrase that should strike more fear in your heart than that is self-driving Tesla in a school zone. Jeez. What's up, people? Welcome back to 4 Blind. My name is Will. Thank you for joining me. Today, I want to bring you some hands that I played recently at Final Table Poker in one of their $500 tournaments. This was a great time, great event, good dealers, players. There were players there, and I just had a hoot doing it. Hope you enjoy these hands. Let's take a look. The first interesting hand, I'm dealt ace-queen off in early position. I open to 800, and it folds around to a gentleman in the small blind who looks like he pays $8 a month for Twitter blue, so I know this guy doesn't care about money. He clicks call, as does the big blind, and we go three ways to a flop of queen, four, seven, with two clubs. It checks to me, and I bet a little more than half pot, 1500. Only the small blind calls, and we go heads up to a nine of hearts on the turn, and he checks. If this guy is willing to pay for a service that's provided free, he's probably willing to call with a hand that shouldn't, so I go ahead and size up to 3.5k here. He takes a moment before making the call. We go heads up to a river that brings the 8 of hearts. He checks once more, and now I'm a little more hesitant to bet, as 5-6 gets there, as well as some random 2-pair combos, and really, what worse hand is going to call us on the river? So I make a pretty nitty check back, and he shows ace-4 of spades. Wow. In addition to being a Twitter Blue subscriber, this guy might be a Dogecoin maximalist. Later, I'm dealt King-4 suited in early position. Considering the quality of play I've seen at the table so far, I'm not inclined to fold anything really, so I go ahead and limp. The cutoff overlimps before a player who looks like he asks his girlfriend for permission to use the bathroom raises to 1.8k from the button. The player from the last hand calls a small blind and it's back to me. In this particular configuration where the cutoff can never have good cards and the small blind's qualification for calling is having two pieces of plastic in front of him, I'm really only worried about the button's range. I have some decent removal effects on Kings and Ace King, along with the read that he's not a super aggressive player, so I go ahead and bump it up to 5.1k. The cutoff folds and it's back to the button who goes into the tank. He hems and haws, considers his options for a bit, until I end up like his girlfriend, winning the confrontation without a fight. The small blind folds and I take down a decent pot and I'm starting to build some nice momentum. Next hand, I'm dealt ace-king off in early position, and I open to 1.1k. It folds to our friend Mr. Twitter Blue, who calls on the button. We go heads up to a flop of jack-5 deuce rainbow. Could probably go either way against this particular player here, this time I opt for a check. He checks back, and we see a six of diamonds on the turn. At this point, this dude's range is still wider than Trump's ass in a pair of tennis shorts, so I go ahead and bet 1k, knowing he'll call worse. He makes the call and we're off to the river, which comes a beautiful ace of spades. In this particular spot, I think a bet is definitely good, but I also think this dude is just going to bet this river way too frequently with hands like bottom or middle pair for no reason. So I go ahead and check it over to him and he almost instantly carves out 4k. I take a moment to act like I'm pondering a call, but really I'm thinking about Vegas and the fucking Mirage. I make it 11k and it's back to my opponent. He looks like he's just eaten a rotten Oreo, but he's not dissuaded. He makes the call. I flip over my cards and deliver the bad news, but let him know that Joey Kanish's truck is still available. After this, I get moved to a new table where I'm dealt pocket eights. Under the gun opens to 2k, plus one calls, and I call in the low jack. Everyone else at the table calls also, so we go eight ways to a flop of 475 rainbow. It checks to me, and with an overpair and a gutter, I think a bet is in order. Since there are so many players behind though, I don't want to go too large, so I just bet 5k. The hijack and the button both call, so we go three ways to a turn, which is pretty decent. It's the six of spades. I decide to play a bit deceptively here and check, and the cutoff bets 6k. The button folds, and it's back to me. From a theoretical standpoint, we really can't have very many good hands here. I'm probably not calling a lot of 7-8 suited, Pocket 7s, Pocket 6s, some of those combos make it in, but not very many of the suited connectors, so it's very hard for me to have a straight here. So basically, the cutoff has a big range advantage. Then again, I'm playing a $500 live tournament with players whose idea of studying is watching Tough Fish videos on YouTube. Fuck me to goddamn tears! Anyways, he bets 6k, and going along with this deceptive play here, I make the call. 
heads up to the river, which brings the eight of clubs. Mother of God, what the hell is this run out? I just end up checking here. Um, in retrospect, again, another spot where I think we really just want to bluff. He has so much two pair, so many sets, maybe some three X, just hands that really are going to be uncomfortable. Whereas I have pocket eight, so I'm blocking all the eight, nine, um, and he can only have like seven, nine, or maybe pocket nine. So anyways, yes, this should be an all in, but we check. He checks back. He had six, seven of hearts. So feels bad to lose this one. Feels bad to play it so badly. May God have mercy on my soul. That last hand was a bit of a speed bump, but what better way to recover than with pocket aces? I open a 2k under the gun and get called by a dude with a Russian accent in the low jack. Everyone else folds and the two of us see a 557 flop. I check and he bets 5k. I don't want to spring the trap just yet, so I call. The turn brings the king of clubs and I check again. This time, he checks back. The river is a three of clubs, and I decide it's time to go for some value. I think a big bet is probably going to look the bluffiest, so I elect to overbet for 20k. He spends a few moments shifting nervously in his red Adidas tracksuit before deciding on a call. I table the goods, and my opponent shows pocket fours. That is very interesting, hmm. The next hand I get involved in starts with an under the gun raise to 3k. It folds to me in the big blind and I look down at ace deuce offsuit. Pretty terrible hand, but I'm bored so I click call. The flop comes ace king jack with a flush draw. I check and my opponent puts out 3k. I call and we see a six of diamonds on the turn. I check again and my opponent snap checks back. The river brings an offsuit nine and I think it's time for a bet. There's a bunch of hands he's continuation betting on the flop that I beat, and I'm pretty confident that I won't get raised as a bluff. In order to incentivize calls from the worst part of this range, I make the bet impossibly small, only 1.4k, just slightly more than one big blind. Everything is going according to plan until my opponent raises to 10,000. My immediate instinct here is to 3-bet all in. When both the ace and king high flush are blocked by the board and my opponent raised under the gun, there's not a ton of flushes left in his range. The problem is the bet size I chose. My bet was like me trying to talk to an attractive woman. Technically it's there, but functionally it's invisible. So I'm not sure how much credit my opponent will give me for a flush in this position. So with that in mind, I decided that a three bet is just a little too risky here. I'm not sure if he's gonna be folding enough. But I'm also bad and really curious, which is a deadly combination, which leads to me calling. This is not a good call. Do not make this call. We don't beat anything. Yikes. My opponent had queen 10 of spades, so flop the straight, check back the turn, and had a pretty easy raise on the river once I picked that size. So well played to my opponent. I hate myself. I win and lose a few small pots before this hand where the hijack opens to 3.5k and I have king queen offsuit in the big blind. This hand is fine to play either way, but I decide to 3 bet to 10k, knowing he won't 4 bet enough and will probably overfold post. He makes the call and we're heads up to a flop of 855 rainbow. This is a pretty decent flop for my range, so I see bet 6k. He doesn't take too long before making the call. The turn brings the deuce of clubs changing nothing. He only called preflop, so his range is capped, whereas I can have all sorts of value hands and over pairs, so I keep firing, this time for 15,000. He spends a little time mulling things over before making the call. I'm getting a little nervous at this point, but I'm probably gonna have to fire the third barrel no matter what. The river is the jack of diamonds, which honestly isn't horrible, I can still credibly represent hands like queens, kings, and aces, and maybe I'll have a super thin value bet with like pocket tens here, something like that. I have about 80,000 behind at this point, and there's 64,000 in the pot roughly, so jamming feels a little ambitious at this SPR, and I'm wondering if perhaps a smaller size will get the same job done while risking less. So I settle on a bet of 35,000. I'm sitting there feeling quite nervous and things go from bad to worse when my opponent announces all in. 
Obviously, I snap muck. We can't beat damn near anything. And my opponent actually, after I turned the camera off, flipped ace nine offsuit. Definitely an unconventional play there. One you don't see super often. But hey, I've had my share of unconventional plays. In fact, I think I took a similar line the other week when I was playing online and my cat jumped up on my keyboard and started projectile vomiting everywhere. At this point in the tournament, the blinds are escalating, my stack is dwindling, and things are looking a little bleak. That 9k payday is going to be hard to reach without a couple double ups, which makes every hand moving forward all the more important. I get moved to a new table when the button opens to 4k and I look down at jack 10 offsuit in the big blind. Happy to see a flop here, so I call and totally whiff when it comes 367 rainbow. I check and my opponent checks back. We go to a turn which brings the five of hearts. As the big blind, I'm going to have all sorts of straights and two pair here, while my opponent is going to be saddled with a bunch of ace and king high type hands, so I decide to bet 3k, hoping to take it down right here. No such luck though, as my opponent makes the call. The river brings the eight of diamonds, providing me even more straight and two pair combos to represent. So not much of a choice here, just gotta rip it in and pray, so here goes my 17k, Please God, do not have ace nine offsuit. He's thinking, he's deliberating, but it turns out God is not dead as I get the fold I need and get some much needed chips to continue in the tournament. Exactly one orbit later, the blinds have escalated from 1K, 2K to 2K, 3K, which is awesome. I love 50% increases at this stage in the tournament. There's an early position open to 7K, a call from the small blind, when I look down at king queen suited in the big blind. I don't love getting it all in here versus an under the gun opening range, but this hand is just way too strong to do anything but go all in here. The original razor calls, the small blind folds, and I see that I'm up against pocket sevens with a chance to more than double up. Oh, look. Feels bad, tournaments are hell. Damn. All right, so that is it. Just busted out. Uh, not a ton really remarkable to say. Uh, great tournament, great field. Some really uh, interesting plays happening at the tables. Always fun to be a part of that, but you have to run good. When people talk about running good, I think they immediately think of getting good cards, winning a showdown, but there's also other components to running good like getting people to fold when you need them to, getting jams through, having a flop where your opponent misses, not getting three bet a ton on your opens. There's all sorts of other components of positive variants and negative variants that people don't realize. So yeah, a good tournament, played okay, not the worst, not the best, and uh, I'll take that result. Thanks for watching, leave a comment if you like, leave a like, whatever, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Oh